Hi, this is Craig Stocks for Craig Stocks Arts, and I'm recording this video as a companion to go along with the tutorial that I have posted on my website at craigstocksarts.com. And the topic of that tutorial is exploring some of the advantages of setting your camera to record the raw image rather than recording a finished JPEG file. Most cameras, the most digital SLRs and higher end point and shoot type cameras, have the capability of recording either a finished JPEG, which is the default, or you can set the camera to record a RAW file or a RAW image, sometimes just called shooting RAW. And what it's doing is capturing the RAW data that comes from the sensor and saving that without any further processing. So it's not really processed into a picture, it's just the data from the sensor. And what you then do is take that raw data to the computer and use tools like Photoshop to convert the raw data into the picture that you want. The advantage is you have a lot more control and a lot more flexibility over how that raw data is translated into a finished image. Uh, you have a lot more control over the color, the brightness, the contrast, and so forth. And you're not limited to just the options that are inside the camera. So as an example, I have an image that I want to quickly process through as a RAW file, and then for comparison we'll process it as a JPEG, and you'll see a dramatic difference in what we're able to do with that image. So let me open the image, and I'm going to open it in Photoshop, and all current versions of Photoshop and all the Photoshop elements come with a plug-in, it's included with Photoshop, called Adobe Camera Raw, or just sometimes just called Camera Raw or ACR. And it is a preprocessor that knows how to process the raw data from just about every camera on the market and translate that into an image file that you can then continue to work with inside of Photoshop. This is the image that we're going to work with. It's obviously very dark. It was taken before sunrise along the beach. You can see a little bit of sun starting to peek over the horizon. And you can also see the stars in the sky. The orange light over here is from some sodium vapor lights in a parking lot in a motel that was along the beach. Now, the, there were some parameters that limited how I was able to expose this photograph. Uh, it's a 30 second exposure, and that's about the longest exposure you can have and still have stars rendered as points of light rather than streaks of light. I was shooting at ISO 200, which this was an older camera, and ISO 200 was about as high as I wanted to go before I would start to get just an, an unacceptable level of noise in the image. And lastly, it was shot at f2.8, which is, is as wide open as I could have the lens. So this was as much light as I could get in, given the circumstances for this exposure. But because I had the camera set to record in RAW, these areas that look like they're completely black really do still have some information in them. And I can start by grabbing this exposure slider and just drag it to the right and that will brighten the image overall and you really start to see some of the stars popping out in the sky. There's also a fill light slider and what the fill light does is brighten just the dark areas without brightening the light areas. And when we put in a fair amount of fill light, we start to see there really is quite a bit of color and detail in these areas where the grass appeared just black in the other image. In fact, we've got enough detail now that we might want to boost the contrast a little bit and maybe even bring the blacks, the very blacks, back down to give it a little bit more punch and contrast. Where there's other controls that you can work with in the Camera Raw plugin. One of them is lens correction. This was shot with a very wide angle, a 16 to 35 millimeter zoom. It has some vignetting in the corners and some distortion, some chromatic aberration, which gives green and magenta edges along some of these high contrast edges. But I can apply an automatic correction based on a profile of this lens and the Adobe Camera Raw plugin corrects for those those abnormalities. Uh, it looks like in this case that it has corrected too much for vignetting. The corners are a little bit too light. So I might back that vignetting down a little bit and restore some of the darkness in the corners, but not as much as was there originally. I might also want to do some local corrections. For instance, this footpath is 
pretty dark and it's blending in with the grasses, there's an adjustment brush that I can select the brush and select to brighten the exposure and then by brushing along this path I can brighten that area and give a little more visual interest to that. If that seems like too much I can always go back to the slider and adjust it back down a little bit or up whatever level of brightness I want just by selecting that control point and then adjusting it again. I also might want to darken the sky a little bit and to do that there's a graduated filter that I can use to set this as darken, uh, drag a gradient down here and darken just that area of the sky. So in just a, just a very few minutes I can create a much better image than we had as a starting point. At this point I might click to open the image. The camera raw plugin will process the file and the image will open automatically in Photoshop ready for any additional editing or adjustments I might want to make. Now as a comparison let's look at what happens if we start with a JPEG version of that file and the JPEG version is not going to have as many capabilities to process as the raw file. So let me open the JPEG and again this is a JPEG that was processed from the raw file so it represents what the camera would have saved had we had the camera do the raw processing. This is the, the JPEG now. It looks just like the raw file did to start with but when we start to use the tools to brighten the image, for instance the simple levels adjustment, if we brighten the, the bright areas the stars start to come out but that's about it. If we brighten the image overall we start to get too bright and washed out in the sky. We start to get kind of a high contrast, kind of a pretty, pretty crude looking detail in the grass here. We don't have the, the bright yellow in the trees over here and there's really no detail at all in this area. We can make that lighter but all we're doing is making making it a light gray. There's just no detail there in the file. If you compare the two files between what we did with the raw file and what we did with the JPEG version, there's just a, a dramatic difference between what we're able to accomplish with the raw file and what we're able to do with the JPEG. And that's typical with a raw file if you have a, an exposure problem you can usually, a lot of times you can save those files and turn them into something that's usable. If you have a good file you can turn it into something great uh, much easier than you can with a JPEG file. So that's the purpose of this tutorial. I'm not trying to make you an expert in RAW processing uh, nor am I trying to convince you that shooting in RAW format is the best thing for everybody. It may not fit your your priorities, it may not fit the what do you want to do with your photography and that's fine. You should make an informed choice though so you're choosing the, the style that works best for you. If you're interested in getting the best image quality, if you like having the control over the image rather than trusting the camera to control it, then I would encourage you to explore raw processing some more. Uh, you can get more information from my website at craigstocksarts.com Likewise, there are lots of tutorials available on the internet. I encourage you to explore those and enjoy yourself and have a good day. Thank you.